Hi there, this is Danny Flex and welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Flex Expectations, our weekly look ahead at the boxing action of the weekend. For the people that haven't watched before, we're here every Thursday at 4.30pm. And this week I want to talk a little bit about the Matchroom show on Saturday night, which is the main show in the UK, probably worldwide this weekend. Um, and it's topped by Conor Ben, um, well to wait, against Sebastian Formella, which should be Ben's biggest test so far as a pro. But not only that, it's an unexpected main event um, for the young fighter in that this card was originally supposed to be topped at Wembley Arena by the highly anticipated rematch between Dillian White and Alexander Povetkin. Unfortunately for White and for Povetkin, um, the latter tested positive for COVID-19, ended up actually hospitalised with it. Um, and that fight's now been delayed until January. So instead of scrapping the card, um, Sky Sports and Matchroom, thankfully, only downgraded it from a box office show to a regular Sky Sports um, show and kept most of the undercard and promoted Conor Ben versus Sebastian Formella to the main event. And we'll talk about that fight in due course, but I want to talk a little bit about Conor Ben specifically um, in that this is one of his first main events where he will be the main name on the card. And it's kind of a, a culmination of a long period where he's learned on the job as a pro and finally, people are starting to take him seriously as a potential British champion and beyond that as well. That's a very interesting fight. Um, Formella has been in with Sean Porter um, in his last fight in the US only a few months ago. So he hasn't been out of the ring for as long as Conor Ben. Lost every round against Porter. I interviewed him earlier in the week, Formella. Um, and he's pretty self-effacing. You know, he's happy to say he learned a lot in there, but he didn't win a round. Um, but lasted 12 rounds against a aggressive, persistent, world-class fighter, and former world champion, of course, in Sean Porter. Um, and certainly better than anyone Conor Ben's faced, significantly better than anyone Conor Ben's faced so far as a pro. But Conor Ben is an evolving fighter. He's been working with Tony Sims since turning pro, and he certainly added a lot more guile and ring IQ to his raw physical talents. You know, he's fast, he's powerful, um, but his footwork's improved, his upper body movement's improved, and he certainly knows when to step on the pace and went to step back a lot better than he used to. And I think a lot of that's testament to his dedication. A lot of people criticise Conor Ben for being born with the proverbial silver spoon in his mouth. Now, I understand that to an extent. His father is, of course, the legend Nigel Ben, um, former multi-time champion, uh, rich by the time he finished his boxing career, and still wealthy now, of course. But I think that kind of misses the point a little bit. I think it's a double-edged sword in that, yes, um, that does give you certain advantages. The Ben name opens doors. The money certainly helps. But on the flip side, A, you've got to live up to expectations that aren't necessarily fair because of who your father was. And B, to dedicate yourself to not just moving from um, Australia, where he was living a, a lovely lifestyle before, to come over here and train hard under Tony Sims, where he doesn't really know anyone in this country apart from his dad, who's not always here, um, and work that hard. That says a lot about him but also to give up what could have been a comfortable upbringing, doing pretty much any job he was qualified for because he had that backing behind him and giving it up to dedicate yourself to a hard, unforgiving sport like boxing. I think that deserves a huge amount of credit. A lot of people say that poverty breeds hunger, not literal, although it does, um, but that poverty makes you strive for success because you never want to go back to you know, the, the paltry um, rewards, if you like, of your upbringing. But the flip side of that is that for someone like Conor Ben, who didn't need to do that, he sacrificed the um, privilege that he had as a kid and decided, made a decision. He didn't. He's not fighting because he has to. He's fighting because he wants to, because he wants to achieve something in boxing, because he loves the sport. And in some ways, that maybe takes even more dedication to give up um, an easier lifestyle and put yourself through the mill than it does to do it because it's your only choice. So I think a lot of the criticism is unfair. And I know from talking to him in the past that a lot of that, um, criticism on social media did upset him in the past. I think he, he doesn't go on it as much now and he learns to take take it more as banter. I think he's grown in the last few years as a person as well. He's a lot more mature. He's in a serious relationship. His missus um, is now, I think, quite heavily pregnant by this point with their first child, which I know he's very much looking forward to the birth of. Um, and just as a, he's learned to look at the bigger picture now and focus on his own development, not so much on what people are saying about him. Um, and Formella is the latest step in that. 
Um, but I've always found him a great guy and a great interview as well. He very much wears his heart on his sleeve. You don't get much bullshit with him, you know. He says what he feels. He doesn't care what, how people judge him for it as much as he used to. And I admire that about him. You know, I wish we could all be a bit more like that. Um, you know, he didn't even start boxing properly. Obviously, he messed about with his dad, but he didn't start boxing properly until he was 16 years old. Um, had his first amateur fight at 16 or 17 um, in Australia after the family had moved there from Spain. He spent most of his upbringing in Spain um, at a villa over there. And then apparently his dad still got a six bedroom mansion now in Australia where he could just sit and chill if he so chose. Um, he only had, I think, 20 amateur fights of which he won 18. So as he turned pro, he is very much, as I said earlier, learning on the job. And there's clearly improvement in him in his last few fights from the guy that struggled very much so in the first fight with Cedric Pano, which a lot of people felt he was lucky to come out with a draw. I think it was a draw. <laughs> Double check that, but I'm pretty sure it was a draw and he didn't lose. Uh, he didn't win, sorry. Um, but he is unbeaten. Uh, but either way, he struggled a great deal in that fight and didn't seem to know when to step off and box and take breathers. Um, he showed by outpointing Pano in the rematch and clearly outpointing him, there was no controversy about that result, that he'd grown already. Um, and it, he suffered in between, I believe, a, a really bad hand injury as well. So in the short time he's been a pro, I think he's had a broken jaw, he's ripped tendons or ligaments in his hand um, and had to have an operation on that. So it's not been an easy ride for Conor Ben, it's fair to say. Um, but since then, he's going up against a gradually improving level of opposition, judged pretty well, I would say, um, by Matchroom and by Tony Sims, um, stalwarts of the game, of course, they know what they're doing, particularly Tony, who I think is an excellent and an underrated still trainer. Um, and it gets a gradually improving level of opposition. He's starting to get people out of there. I don't think that's because he's suddenly found power. I think he's always had that. But now it's more about knowing when to use the power at the right times, knowing that not every shot has to be a big swing in loaded up blow. And I think that, that timing... Um, that sense of angles and, and body punching as well to tire your opponent out early, that, that's all improved. And I think because of who he is and the criticism he's got in the past, maybe he doesn't get um, singled out for these accolades, but I think he's one of the most improved boxers in the country. Um, now I've said that, it's the old um, pundit's curse. He'll probably lose at the weekend, hopefully not for his sake, but I genuinely believe he's much improved. I think Formella's a very good fighter, does all the basics well, had a long amateur career, so... Um, different from Conor Ben in that sense. And I think he will give Ben problems. As, as Ben himself admitted in the conference call earlier this week, if he gave Sean Porter a hard night, and he did in terms of being durable, it wasn't competitive necessarily, then he'll definitely give me a hard night. And I think that's true. I think it's a hell of a statement from Conor Ben if he beats him clearly on points. I don't think he needs to stop him or knock him out to make a statement, although you know he'll want to do that. Um, but I just think... This marks a, a stepping, uh, sorry, a, a, a change, I think, perhaps, in how Conor Ben is viewed by the wider boxing community, in that he is a main eventer in his own right. I'm sure the names helped him get to where he is now, but at this point, they felt comfortable going ahead with the Sky Sports show with him at the top of it, even once White Povetkin was ruled out. They didn't put, you know, Babbage Little as the main event. I know that might have been crazy to people because of the few fights that Babbage has had, but it is an attraction and probably the fight on the bill. Apologies to Connor and Fabio Wardley and everyone else that I'm most looking forward to. But they were confident that he could still draw in the viewers. They were confident in matching him with Formella, who is clearly the, the best opponent he's fought as a pro so far. Um, and probably better than some of the fighters that some of his domestic rivals have fought so far as well. You know, I'd have to look into the, the records of everyone, but I'm sure there's people that are rated above Connor Ben currently that haven't fought an opponent as, as qualified as Formella just yet. So... I think it's time to take him seriously and, and not always associate him with his father. I think he'll have to go a long way to prove he's better than his father or to accomplish more than he accomplished. I think that's a distant dream and, and a very unlikely one, an improbable one. Um, but let's just judge him on his, on his own merits now. I think, you know, Formella is the latest step in that journey. I think he could go on from there. He still wants to fight for the British title. Although know, Chris Jenkins is defending that next um, he's already got a fight lined up, so that won't happen until at least next year. Um, but then if he does get past Formella in good fashion, maybe a European title challenge um, against the winner of David Avenesian and Josh Kelly is not out of the question. I would have laughed, I probably did laugh, um, six months ago even when um, Conor Ben and Josh Kelly was first muted. Um, but now, and, and they haven't fought since to, to kind of change that view, but I just think 
the way Ben talks, the way he's preparing, his general demeanour suggests someone who's now a professional, who's taking his sport very seriously. You know, it's not a hobby. It's not something to prove to people that he's more than just Nigel Ben's son. Now he's doing it for himself and for his family, which is about to expand. And I think we need to take that seriously. It might still be a bit too soon for the Kelly Avanesian winner. But if he's brought along at the right pace, which, you know, Sims and Matchroom have shown they're capable of doing, there's no reason why he can't at least challenge for a world title eventually. Still very young. Still inexperienced. But I think something inside him has changed. And I think as a, as a boxing community, perhaps our perceptions of him need to change along with them. Um, rest of the card, Tom Little, Alan Babich. I've been really impressed by Tom Little. He's, he's almost convinced me um, that, that he's going he's gonna to win the fight. I'm not predicting he's going to win just yet. But we'll see the shape of him on the scales. Apparently, he looks a lot different from how he has in the past. Um, having spoken to him as well, the video um, of the interview with Tom Little will go live before this vlog. So hopefully you'll have seen it before you watch this. He's incredibly motivated and he'll, he'll explain, he explains in the video the reasons why. And your heart goes out to him and it's hard. He's, he's a very endearing guy, as though he's huge and would crush me pretty easily. But or well, just easily, not pretty easily. Um, but yeah, he's, he's a cool guy and I'd, I'd like him to, to get a bit of luck in his career. You know, he's been in with some real tough guys in recent times. Fights that maybe in hindsight he shouldn't have taken, although he disputes that because of the experience he's given him. But now he's fighting more around what should be his level. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Babich does what he says on the tin. You know, he's non-stop from the first bell. Comes to bring entertainment, but surely open to being outboxed and, you know, hurt on the way in. So let's see. Not at the way in. <laughs> on the way in. Um, so let's wait and see what happens with that. Um, Fabio Wardley gets Richard Larty. I expect Wardley to look great in this fight. Um, I expect him to outbox Larty relatively comfortably in a similar way to Nathan Gorman, but with a bit more pop and a bit more venom um, and ruthlessness if he has Larty hurt at any point. So I'm hoping for a stoppage in that one and, and expect to see one. And also um, Liam Davis against Sean Cairns should be quite an entertaining fight for the English bantamweight title. Not to mention at short notice, uh, Jez Smith, um, real warrior, who I interviewed earlier in the week, going up against Ben Ridings, um, who was ruled out of um, Ultimate Boxer, or Boxer as it's now called, sorry, not too long ago, after a positive COVID test. He now gets another chance on TV. So that one will be worth watching also. Let me know what you think about Conor Ben specifically in the comments below, um, and I'll respond to some of them. You know, is it time we started taking him seriously? Or do you still see him as an overhyped fighter on the basis of who his father was? Be interesting to know and what your rationale is. I'll be back on Monday for Reflections, 4.30pm, talking about the show um, in hindsight. I might even do a show review on uh, or Joe Lee and I might do some fight reviews on Saturday night. We haven't decided yet, so keep a lookout. Um, and I'll be back with the next Flexpectations next Thursday at 4.30pm. Where we'll be looking ahead to probably the most anticipated all domestic clash of the year between Daniel Dubois and Joe Joyce. Really appreciate your time as always, and I will see you all soon. Cheers. Thank you.